dr. jeffries, can you tell me something about the tetanus toxin model and how it resembles temporal lobe epilepsy? dr. jeffries yes, a pleasure. the um so we inject a very small amount of tetanus toxin directly into the hippocampus usually of a rat and it produces a period of quiet and and nothing happens for a few days after maybe five days or a week or so the animals start having spontaneous seizures and they recur unpredictably for the next um four or five six weeks uh, and they seizures all last a couple of minutes never longer than three minutes there's no status epilepticus um, and the, the, they look electrographically very much like human seizures the the behaviors overlap uh, with temporal lobe epilepsy in humans quite a lot uh, in the sense that you get uh, automatisms you get um, facial twitching and, and so on in addition you get uh, classical rearing and falling and wild running which is not typical of humans as far as i know but i think given that the rat is a different nervous system i'm not too worried about that so they generalize it's just the mm-hmm. way the generalization is expressed is somewhat different mm-hmm. and it's uh, partially drug resistant mm-hmm. so from that point of view it seems to meet a number of useful features for a model and, and what have you learned from the tetanus toxin model with respect to sudep right so this was a, something new we started uh, actually initially with some student projects which has grown rather a lot so we started recording ECGs in parallel with our uh, ECOGs and hippocampal recordings and I was really surprised to dis- discover that the uh, animals have quite severe changes in heart rate. Uh, typically they get a, a tachycardia and acceleration of the heart beat which is seen in a number of human epilepsies. Unlike most human reports though those tachycardias last for in excess of half an hour which came as a surprise. But on looking at the literature more closely, this is reported in the clinic as well, but uh, certainly at Queen Square um, the group with Matthew Walker has been has reported very prolonged tachycardias in some of their patients with temporal lobe epilepsy. So I think we have a clear parallel. And I think that's important because repeated doses of adrenaline or um, sympathetic activity will damage the heart uh, over time. And I think we may be starting to see an expression of that because with repeated seizures we start to get a bradycardia where the heart rate drops quite precipitously early mm-hmm. on in the seizure, mm-hmm. uh, very often with missed beats, uh, fibrillation and some really quite unpleasant looking uh, ECGs. Mm-hmm. So that's um, a whole raft of things which you can find parallels in the clinical literature and gives me hope we can then use the more um, invasive approaches we can use in experimental models to Uh, ask questions about mechanism and potential treatments. Uh, The one thing that's missing is at the moment we don't have a handle on respiration. Uh, Mm -hmm. That should be coming in the the new year, Mm -hmm. getting up to do it. So we'll add respiration to ECG so we'll know if we're getting apneas in parallel. Mm -hmm. So what it's provided us with I think is a, a, a test bed that will allow us to start to explore mechanisms that could be relevant to SUDEP. Mm-hmm. Just to say the one thing our rats don't do is die. Mm-hmm. So in that respect, it's not a great model of SUDEP. But on the other hand, they live a very sheltered life mm-hmm. you know, with perfect nutrition and an absolutely stable environment. Uh, so in time, we're going to need to think about adding in other risk factors to see whether this, these cardiac and potentially respiratory abnormalities mm-hmm. uh, can then uh, exacerbate other risk, risk factors and ultimately cause death. Do you have any evidence that the genetic background of the rat makes a difference in their susceptibility to some of some of these changes? Not yet. It's something we're alert to. So if we find rats that, uh, if we get to the stage where we have rats that die, we'll, we'll certainly start taking tissue samples and get some of our mm-hmm. genetics colleagues to to, um, to do genotyping. Um, I think what's more likely, in, um, that, that's going to be opportunistic. Mm-hmm. So if we get animals to die, we're going to try and figure out why, and that may well have a genetic element to it. Uh, the other approach we can take is some uh, inbred strains of rats that have uh, cardiac weaknesses of one sort or another would mm-hmm. be uh, candidates to put together with our epilepsy model to see whether that mm-hmm. will then lead to a, a catastrophic event. We, we can potentially record from the nerves that innervate the heart and uh, Actually, they may also provide a route for treatment. If we provide the vagus nerve stimulation, for instance, might be a way of normalizing cardiac function. Mm-hmm. Um, in ex- if 
we get evidence in vivo that the heart is intrinsically damaged uh, by the repeated seizures, then we will have an opportunity to take the heart out and look at it in vitro with a classic Langendorf preparation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's not my speciality, but uh, my next door neighbor does this sort of thing and uh, mm -hmm. we'll then do some classical cardiac physiology. Thank you very much, Dr. Okay. Jeffries. My pleasure.